Oh, hello, 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 my friends. Scotty J here, back again with another episode of Nine Hours, Nine Persons, and Nine Doors. Now, last time, we had a couple of significant things happen. First, Santa betrayed the group by putting a gun to June's head and going through the first Nine Door with Ace, Lotus, himself, and June. Then, Junpei somehow recalled the safe password, uh, and was able to open the coffin to let Snake out, which allowed the four of us to go through the other number nine door. We trudged on a little bit, and now we are about to enter the library. The forest of knowledge, if you will. Let's jump to it, shall we? All right, and welcome to the library. Well, nothing too crazy out in this one. It's a big old circular room with a catwalk and some stairs on down. Let's have some fun, shall we? Ooh, there's a note on that table. Lights to the books. Huh, what does that mean? Oh, interesting. Oh, well, intelligence often hides itself in darkness. Have you ever thought about the pages of a book? Each page only sees, what, maybe two or three minutes of light before the reader's on to the next? They spend the rest of their lives locked in darkness. Rather like myself. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining, not at all. I live in the darkness, yes. But that has gifted me with the ability to catch truths others might miss. I can hear the voices hidden in the darkness, they might say. We might say. Alright, well, let's look at these bookshelves, shall we? Energy theory, huh? I don't even understand the damn title. Looks like the shelf's all sciency and technology. Hmm, good to know. Oh, hey, what is this? That seems obvious. What's the deal with these titles? They're all just gibberish. Hey, what if we, like, switch them around? Switch them around? Yeah. If we move them around, maybe they'll spell something. Oh, I get it. Yeah, heck, it's worth a shot. All right, well, you heard him. Let's move some books around, shall we? Let's go for... We could spell nope with this top line. But it's, uh... Ah, the rest of it's kind of nonsense. What if we did... Um... Oh, you could do open. Let's do open. Oh, yeah, look at that. How about this? Ah, oh, looks like putting those books in the right order opened this thing right up. Haha, <laughs> it was a piece of cake. Hooray! Oh, you did it, Junpei! I guess that turned out well enough. So the letters in the title spell out, Open here, find bulb. Hey, when we found a bulb. Excellent. Well, cool. Let's move on, shall we? Spin around a little more. Now, as you can see, this wall is still the same as what was on this wall a second ago. So we don't need to keep double-checking. Hmm. The black hole hypothesis. Gamma ray astrophysics? I guess this bookshelf has an astronomy theme. I guess so. A kid's book? Here? Looks like it's a children's story about Native Americans. Hmm, don't you think a random book like that's kind of suspicious? Maybe you ought to hold on to it. Yeah, I guess so. Shall we search the book for fun? This one has some Native Americans on the cover. Hey, Junpei, take a look at this one. Native Americans, huh? Maybe it's got some... Whoa! Oh, it's a pop-up book. That's cute. Let's see. Anything of note over here? Oh, look, Seven. Here's a book that's perfect for you. It's called The Correlation of Muscles, Bone Density, and Bone Strength. You're just saying that because it says muscle. Might. This one. Oh, it looks just like that picture book from earlier. The one with the pop-ups. You'd think they're part of a series or something? They do have the same binding. Oh, weird. And there's a baseball on this one. Come on, Jupe. Let's see what's in it. I'm just going to go out a limb here and say it's probably baseball stuff. Whoa! It says head. <laughs> well, all right. That's what we found on that wall. How about over here? This book is called, a uh, Mind Swap. You mean you could, like, change bodies with someone? Well, I guess I wouldn't mind switching bodies with my brother Junpei too much. But I'd rather die than let Seven switch with me. What the hell? Like, I even want to swap bodies with a little brat like... Uh, hey, you were just imagining it. You were. Sh shut up. <laughs> well, he isn't the only one. Oh, Junpei, how could you? 
Kitsabab El Zif? Man, they got some weird stuff here. Even I can't pronounce this one. Who's that? Some famous guy? Well, it's not a person's name. It's the name of a fictional book created by Abdul Alizred. It's said to be one of the sources used in the creation of the legendary Book of the Dead, the Necronomicon. Oh, so these are all occult books and stuff. Yes, all occult books and stuff. Are any books here that look suspicious? Duly noted. Oh wait, it was over. Uh huh. Hee hee. Oh yeah, look at that. An overview of photochemistry. I think whoever set this up wanted us to see the cover, not the spine. Let's look at it, okay? Huh? Looks like there's a whole lot of space behind these books. Look, Junpei! I think there's something hidden behind the books. And she is right. Another powerful light bulb. Well, cool. We've looked at a lot of books. Let's pop on down some stairs. Since there's a whole second floor. I think we'll do something with those a little later. What's over... Let's click this one. Huh, the Pythagorean Theorem. This is a famous one. Sounds like there are a number of math books in this section. He's right. This one's Golbox Conjecture. Conjecture? What is it about? Like magic or psychic stuff or something? Ah, uh, right. I bet you it's about jewelry, isn't it? It may have an odd title, but it's actually a very respectable math book. It deals with one of the unsolved problems of additive number theory. Oh, sorry I said anything. Hey, let's not get into that right now, okay? It says, Riemann Hypothesis. What is there to hypothesize about a Riemann? Isn't it pretty straightforward? Oh, heavens no. There are many factors. Length, girth, lubrication, or lack thereof. It's an exciting and rapidly growing field. Whoa! Gotta let that one sit for a second. Modern Japanese literature, huh? Hey, there's another one of those picture books here. Something about these things feels kind of nice, you know? Brings back good memories. I guess even people like Seven were kids once. Nah, no shit, you little brat! Hey, guys, come on, cool it. Alright, I'm gonna take a, this picture book with me. And what does this one say? It's got a magic wand on it. Okay. So, what's inside? Well, aren't you going to open it? Pretty sure it's just gonna have pages inside, smartass. Whoa! I see five. Interesting. All right. Let's... Ooh, there's like a cabinet right here. Uh, this bookshelf is some sort of glass inlay. It's pretty big, but there's only six on it. Seems kind of weird, huh? Hey, it looks like there's something in on the bottom. I can't really see it, though. The glass is all foggy. Agreed. Oh, there's a lock. No, the glass door is a cylinder lock. You know, the kind of lock where you rotate the numbers around until you've got the right ones to open it. What? What the hell is this? It's like they just gave us the answer. Guess might as well give it a shot. So as we see here, there are six astronomy books and six points on here. They start with volume six. Go down to volume three, volume two, up to volume four, volume one, and volume five. You did it, Junpei! Yeah! I don't know why, but I don't really feel particularly happy about being praised for that. Whatever. At least the lock's open now. Let's see if I can get it open, alright? And we got it open. Hey, and there's a light bulb. Nice. Three light bulbs and three books. Oh, hey, there's a spot four, maybe. Alright, so there are three lights in here. I'm gonna change these bulbs out. Now they should. Whoa! These light bulbs really make a difference. It's pretty bright in here now. Oh, cool. Let's throw the pop-up books on in. It's a small enclosure with nine sides. There are three things that kind of look like music stands. Okay, how about we try putting these picture books on the stands? Then... Awesome! It looks like it worked! Oh, uh, way to go, Junpei! Good job, buddy! There's something projecting on the bottom. These letters, they seem familiar. Shell Drake 5? Shell Drake 5. Shell Drake. Did you read the text out loud? I think I saw the rest of this collection somewhere. Yeah, I think it's somewhere around here. Let's go take a look. Okay. Seven and Clover walked off, leaving Junpei and Snake behind. Have you heard of him? Uh, Shell Drake, I mean. Junpei grinned. 
Yeah, actually. Uh, Lotus told me about him. There's a British biochemist named Sheldrake, and he had a rather interesting theory. The theory of morphogenetic fields, which relies on the theory of morphic resonance. Really? From Lotus, huh? Well, Clover also said something to me about that stuff. She did? Yeah, um, oh, what was it? The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. Hmm, that girl. I told her not to tell anyone. You did? Why? Junpei's eyes narrowed. Look, man, I didn't push it because we were in a hurry, but I'm kind of sick of this. How about you just tell me, okay? Tell you what? Oh, don't give me that. About the experiment. Snake's shoulders slumped, and he shook his head slowly. He'd finally given up. Very well, fine. I'll tell you everything. But not here. Let's move to the top floor. Junpei nodded. With that, they climbed the stairs to the top floor. Snake was silent for a moment, after they'd arrived, then finally crossed his arms and spoke. I suppose I might as well start by telling you why I kept quiet, and why I made sure Clover did as well. To be honest, the explanation is quite simple. Zero told me not to. I had little choice. He didn't walk up and tell me, of course. He gave me a message engraved on a card. Snake reached into his sleeve and pulled out a small, stiff piece of paper. It looked a good deal like the one he'd shown everyone on the central staircase. So you had two cards? No, only one. Huh? What do you mean? I thought the card just had some rules for the notary game on it. Oh, yes, it did. And those were the rules I read you. However, they were not the only thing written on the card. There was something I didn't read. Perhaps I should say there was something I couldn't read. And what was that? Tell no one of the events that took place nine years ago. Tell and I activate your sister's detonator. Uh oh. Well, um. Snake nodded. Well, what about Clover? Did she get a message from Zero, too? Mm, I don't believe she did. But doesn't it strike you as strange that Zero would shut my mouth, but not hers? Yeah, it does seem a little weird. Turn the safe side, however, I told her it was best not to tell anyone. Still, apparently she told you. That girl. What's wrong with her telling me? I figured out some stuff with the things she'd mentioned. Hmm. I mean, it looks like the whole activator detonator thing was just a bluff. She's prancing around downstairs, happy as a clam that you're back. Snake glanced down at Clover and Seven, examining one of the bookshelves. And that's very true. I've decided I can trust you. I've decided to tell you the truth. The chance that Santa is zero is very high. And I can assume Santa doesn't have the time to observe us at the moment. At any rate, even if he were here... I very much doubt he would kill us. Well, why is that? Well, Clover told me about the four-leaf clover, about the words. If he knew about that, then he was in my group during the first experiment. I'm sure of it. He wouldn't kill us, no matter what the situation was. Snake paused and cocked his head as he thought, as, as though he were listening to something very far away. His face looked dark, as though something was weighing on him. Hey, um, Snake? Jimmy wasn't quite sure what to say. Snake turned and looked at him. Yes, I know. You want to know what happened during the experiment. Well, yeah. How much do you know? Shubert related to Snake everything Clover had told him. The morphogenetic field and the experiments nine years prior that had dealt with it. How the experiments had taken place simultaneously at two locations. One being the ship and the other being the building in Nevada. And how they'd played the nonary game. He told him everything. And finally... He told him how a girl had died during the experiment. Oh, she told you all that, did she? Snake looked down. His face was tight. A slight tremor shook his body, and he tried to hide it. He was putting on a good front, but even Chumpe could tell that he was holding something back. Something deep and powerful. He made as if to brush something from his face and looked up at Chumpe. At any rate, I now know how much you've learned. All that remains is for us to determine who did this and why, right? Yes. Can you tell me what happened? Snake nodded slowly. The people who organized the initial experiment were from a company called Cradle Pharmaceutical. There were four people running the show. Gintaro Hongo, Nagisa Nijisaki, 
Teruaki Kabuto and <laughs> Kichika Mushishido. Hongo was the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceutical. Nijisaki was his right hand man and did the lion's share of the planning. Kabuto led the company's research and development division. Mushushido was the majority shareholder. It was these four people who planned the initial experiment. Hmm, well, let me simplify it for you. Hongo designed it, Nijisaki put it all together, Kabuta developed the technology required, and Mushushido provided the cash. So it's Hongo, Nijisaki, Kubota, and Mushushido? Jibei couldn't shake the sense that he'd heard those four names somewhere before. Of course, more than four people were required to conduct the experiment of this scale. To that end, they organized a top-secret team to assist them with their research. All in all, they gathered ten people or so. Those ten completed their team, and they were able to begin the project. They named it the Nonary Project. The purpose of the experiment was to research the prospect of controlling a human mind through sheer will. The vessel, I suppose you could say, for this control was the morphogenetic field. Why did the glycerin suddenly begin to crystallize? Why did the crystal structure of EDT undergo a sudden change? Why did the rats improve their puzzle-solving skills with each generation? Experiments with human produced the same results. The more people who knew an answer to a question, the more people there who could answer correctly without having seen the problem before. Why? How? The answer is that the shape of the answer had been stored in a field invisible to the naked eye. And through the field, the resonant event transmits information related to that answer. That's essentially the idea behind morphogenetic fields. But that's just a theory. Oh, can't bring yourself to believe it? No, not really. Mm, let's say someone killed another person because the devil told them to do it. Whether the devil exists or not is no relevance to the murder. They believe the devil exists. Whether or not he does is immaterial. So what matters here is that Hongo believed in the morphogenetic field. Snake nodded. But I, I still don't get it. You said they wanted to figure out how to control people? Right, that's what you were saying? Yes. So how are they going to do that with a morphogenetic field? Well, I'll keep it simple. Let's suppose 10,000 people have solved a certain problem. Chance of you knowing the answer, even if you've no one told you, will go up. Let's have another example, shall we? If a million people were to do a handstand right now, tomorrow the chance of you doing a handstand would be higher even if you'd never heard of this hypothetical mass handstanding. Mankind's thought process and actions are all part of a resonant event. All of the resonant events encoded in the field are projected onto you. Of course, this assumes that you believe in such a theory. Do you follow so far? Yeah, I follow. Well, let's say hypothetically that there was a person who had the same effect on those mil as those millions of people. What would happen? If that one person were to do a handstand, people would find themselves wanting to do handstands as well. Can you imagine what a person with powers like that would be able to do? Oh, come on, there's no way that... Oh, I'm not done. Imagine another scenario. Imagine another person. This is an ordinary person. Let's say he does a handstand. What if there was someone who could grab the resonant event created by doing that and use it to make other people do handstands? What would happen? A person who has the power to write to the field and someone who can read from the same. You could think of this as a writer and a reader, or the transmitter and the receiver. What would the world look like if there were people with abilities like these? Jupe thought about it for a moment. So the transmitter's resonant event can be transmitted through the field and sent to the receiver? And then the transmitter can control the receiver however they wish? That's what you're saying, right? Mm, yes, well, close enough at least. Oh, come on, that's just great. Well, if you want to prove that, you'll have to test it first. At least that's how they thought. That was why they decided to do their experiment. That was how the Nonary Project began. Snake suddenly looked very serious. Jubei, have you ever heard of the Gonsfeld experiment? Jubei nodded. Yeah, that was the experiment in telepathy, right? They put a pair of subjects in separate rooms, and they'd show one of them a picture and ask the other one what they saw. Interesting. Well, I'm impressed. Yes, that is the correct answer. So why'd you bring up the Gonsfeld experiment? It was used to screen subjects for the Nonary Project. The hospital in a remote town was affiliated with the Cradle Pharmaceutical. Hongo used it to conduct experiments on visiting children in secret. 
Some of them, he found, had potential. He began to gather children that showed promise. Children that seemed as though they might be able to access the field. Of course, none of them volunteered. They were kidnapped. His face barely moved as he spoke. There were nine pairs of siblings taken, for eighteen children total. For reasons they were not fully understood at the time, each pair had one transmitter and one receiver. They were split perfectly. As such, the eighteen children were split into two groups of nine. The children who were put in group Q were the ones who excelled at transmitting. They were transferred to the mock experiment building known as Building Q in the Nevada desert. The children who excelled at receiving were put into Group A. The members of Group A were placed on a former hospital ship, the Gigantic. From the experiments he had conducted so far, Hongo had learned the following. There were two things that can increase one's resonance with the fields. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. Have you ever been faced with an especially difficult problem and thought about it for a very long and very hard until finally an answer suddenly appeared in your mind? It may seem obvious to say so, but that is what is meant by epiphany. Information obtained through the epiphany can be easily transmitted through the fields, where it can be easily interrupted. Adding danger to that equation allows for even easier field access. Therefore, Hongo set up a number of puzzles across the gigantic. Participants had to solve each puzzle before they could move on to the next room. Of course, he hadn't forgotten to include the danger. More specifically, he had detonated a bomb on the hull of the Gigantic. The children in Group A were forced to play the notary game as the ship sunk. By forcing the children into a life-or-death situation, Hongo hoped to increase the likelihood of them tapping into the field. The children from Group Q, on the other hand, were confined to the mock experiment building, Building Q. Building Q duplicated the interior and the puzzles of the Gigantic exactly. Hongo explained the situation to the children of Group Q. Solve the puzzles you find throughout the rooms. When you solve them, transmit that information to the children of Group A. If you succeed, they'll be able to solve the puzzles and escape. But if you fail, then the Gigantic will sink, and your brothers and sisters will drown. Do you know why the astronauts of Apollo 13 were able to return to Earth safely? It was because NASA had access to a replica of the Apollo 13 capsule. All of the equipment, the instruments, everything. All of it identical. NASA was able to replicate the situation the astronauts were facing. By putting themselves in the same situation, they attempted to solve the problems they knew the astronauts were experiencing. Once they found a solution, they reported their findings to the men aboard the actual capsule. That was how they were able to return safely. It was the same with the gigantic and building Q. The children from Group Q had used the power of Epiphany to solve the puzzles they found and transmit what they learned through the fields. The children in Group A, however, had to access the fields to learn how they might advance to the next stage. Mm, that's the simplest explanation I can manage. Snake sounded defeated. His half-hearted attempt at derision served only to show how much the story had affected him. Mr. Junpei was about to speak. Hey! Junpei! Snake! How much longer are you two going to sit on those bony asses? Get down here already! Seven's voice echoed from below. Snake took a deep breath and blinked rapidly, as if just waking up from a long nap. He's right. Let's go, shall we? We don't have much time. We need to get out of here, and soon. Snake headed for the stairs, but Junpei put an arm out to stop him. Hold it. There is one more thing I want to ask you. Hmm? Are you sure there were 18 kids? Why? Well, I thought there was only 16. Oh, yes, that's what they said on the news, wasn't it? Yes, I have no doubt there were 18 children abducted and used in Hongo's experiment. After all, you couldn't exactly play a nonary game with any less, could you? Well, yeah, but... Are you saying that the news got it wrong? Yes, I am. There were two more children. However, they had no relatives that I'm aware of. I imagine no one filed a police report when they went missing. They were brother and sister, like Clover and I. The brother's name was Aoi. And the sister's name was... Her name was... Snake couldn't seem to bring himself to continue. That as if he was about to say it brought him great pain. Her name was Akane. That was the girl who died. Jibbe felt as though as if he'd been punched in the stomach. His vision went blurry and his head felt light. He couldn't think straight. Everything was blank. Had Akane Kurashiki died nine years ago? 
If she had, then who was June? No, no, that was impossible. It couldn't be true. Akane wasn't an uncommon name. If Snake had known her last name, then that would be a different matter entirely. So they shared a name. There are many other people who did as well. It meant nothing. It was a different person. Of, of course it was a different person. It had to be a different person. Jupe shook his head hard and pulled himself back to reality. Is something wrong, Jupe? Your breathing sounds strange. Then Snake had noticed. Jupe cleared his throat and tried to act calm. Oh, no, it's nothing. I'm fine. Uh, let's get back down there, all right? Snake raised an eyebrow but said nothing. He headed down the stairs, with Junpei bringing up the rear. He couldn't bring himself to ask. He told himself he knew the answer already, but he couldn't bring himself to ask what the girl's last name had been. With every step he took, the cold, hard sound of feet against metal dug at his heart. All right. Some uh, interesting little developments there. Now, as we saw earlier, there was these books. There's our good buddy Sheldrick. Ah, oh, Sheldrick, that's it. This is what the shadow picture was pointing to. But didn't it say five at the end of the shadow picture? Yes, uh, I think we need to find the fifth volume. Well, would you look at that? There's a big red button behind this book. Well, I guess we should press the button then. Let's do it. Oh, wow. Big ol' old wall. Huh, oh, sweet. What was that sound? It sounded like something really big was moving. It came from the top floor. Alright, let's go check it out. You heard him. Up we go. The stairs. Turn, turn. Haha, -ha, there we go. Got a little thing over here. There's a keyboard in front of the numbers, and there are four Roman numerals on the wall. It's gotta be some sort of hint. Hmm. X, I, 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 X, I, V, X, and X, I, I, I. They're all Roman numerals. You think we just need to put the numbers in from the wall on the keyboard? Uh, no, you can't. The keyboard doesn't have any number keys. You can't type in stuff like three or four. Hmm. Then that means. That's right. You guessed it. I bet you're gonna type something in on that keyboard. Uh, yeah, but you can only enter letters. And it looks like you can only enter four letters. Hmm, let's see how it works. I guess you just need to hit enter once you type in the letters. And you can erase what you type with control clear. Okay, I get the basic operation. Let's give it a shot. Thanks, Junpei. So, uh, once again, it's our favorite. Hexadecimal! So D, E, A, and D. Bade. There we go. Yeah, hey! You did it, Junpei! It's unlocked now! Mm, good job, Junpei. Whoa there, don't get too excited. The password was dead, remember? Just makes me think whatever's waiting for us isn't good. So what? Jeez, you're such an old lady. We can't be worrying about stuff like that. I mean, come on, we got it to unlock, didn't we? Let's go, hurry up! Hmm. Alright, to the door. Alright, let's get this thing open. Yeah, we found it! Alright! The door opened, and Junpei and the others leapt through it. But no sooner had they done so, than the clang of metal on metal rang out from behind them. They spun around. The door they'd just come through had slammed shut. Junpei grabbed hold of it with both hands and pulled with all his strength. Arrgh! Damn it! Looks like it locks automatically. Is there any other way out? Well, there's another door over on the right. There's a card reader next to it. It's got a red light on it, though, so I'm pretty sure it's locked, too. But there is a card reader, right? Yeah. Then perhaps if we find a key card, we can open the door and leave? Well, yeah, that might work, but... Hey, wait a minute. Are you saying we're going to have to search through this room for one little card? Oh, man. They took a second to look at the room they'd found themselves in. It was filled with piles upon piles of all manner of things. The only word that they could describe was chaotic. It was like a tornado had passed through, followed by a giant who picked up and shaken the entire room a few times. 
Jubei's heart fell. Clover and Seven looked as though they were about to cry. Well, we can sit down and wait to die, if that's what you'd prefer. I'd rather doubt that, though. So, it would be wise to start looking. We haven't much time. Let's find the key card. Oh, and the Neptune key as well. We won't be able to get through that hallway without it. Hmm. 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 Alright then. Let's begin. Snake finally gets to do a countdown to a escape room. You go, Snake. What? Do, 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 do. Alright, and welcome to the last escape room of our little session. Of our entire playthrough, actually. Welcome to the study. Oh, yes. We got a big old, like, computer monitor section here. Screens of sorts. Let's have some fun, shall we? Oh, hey, we got a chart. Hey, Junpei, isn't this a nautical table? Yeah, I feel like I've seen this before. New material's been added to the file screen. Also, this tune is bumping, by the way. Oh, hey, what do we got here? The screen is huge. I wonder why it's blue. Maybe if I touch it? Oh, there's something on the screen now. What's this? There are 15 cells here with numbers and letters in them. Oh, let me see that. Ah, uh, I see. So whenever you touch a cell, the ones next to it turn on and off. You just gotta use that to make the all cells in the right and the bottom green. Um. Hey Junpei, I found this piece of paper under that thing. You wanna take a look at it? Do you think this might have something to do with the puzzle? It's a piece of paper Clover gave me. There's a bunch of numbers and letters connected by equals next to it. Well, it's just like she said. It's probably related to the puzzle on the screen somehow. Thanks, Clover. This really helps. Hehe. <laughs> All right, let's go back and try again. Anyways, looks like I just need to make all the cells with all green. All right, so this is similar to um, the uh, computer puzzle we did with Lotus and Clover, where if you type this, it'll light up or unlight the circles. However, in this case, we need to get all of these to equal green. So we'll need to once again do some a nice lovely addition here. So it's A-L-L-L-L-A, -L 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 -A, um, which we're using hexadecimal again, woohoo! So what is it? F equals 15, 5. So we're looking for 21, 21, and then 10. So we want 10 here. We probably can't have that D here. Um, let's try. Let's just try for the fun of it. Do the reverse of uh, that one puzzle. That did not work. Okay. Well, let's get rid of the... So we need to turn the D off. We want these two on, I think. Maybe not. Yeah, we want the B off. We want the D off. Um, so now one and nine is right. We'll want six. Um, but we don't want this one here, so let's hit here. Oh, snap! Look at that! We got her! Oh, you did it, Junpei! Oh, you're so smart! <laughs> I mean, it seems to have done an excellent job and solved the puzzle. This is what I've expected from you, Junpei. Hey, come on, you're embarrassing me. Whoa, 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 don't get cocky, kid! We ain't got time for that. Look at this! Check out the right edge of the control panel! The lid slid open and something came out. Oh, what is this? Ooh, it's a cross Ooh. emblem. Neat. All right. Well, that's one done. Um, What's over here? Anything fun on the floor? Nope. Oh, we got another like nautical thing. Oh, yeah, look at that. There's the map. Monitor is part of the machine. It's really dim, though. I've got a map on the world on it, but I can barely see it. Um, There's the compass again. Junpei, it looks like there's a compass on there. Ah, uh, now I get it. What do you mean? Uh, I guess you weren't there, Clover. But I solved a puzzle like this one in the wheelhouse. I think I just need to do the same thing here. The same thing? Uh, the important part is this nautical table we just found. I have to match up the directions on the compass with the lines on the nautical table. I used the steering wheel in the wheelhouse, but this time I'm just going to use the wheel attached to the side here. Okay, then. Show me. Now. Oh, of course. Maybe I ought to run through the instructions one more time. This looks like it probably works the same way as the steering wheel in the wheelhouse. If I just touch the direction I want to turn it, the compass will turn that direction. Then I just gotta press STOP when the compass is pointing to where I want it to. I think something will happen if I do it right. All right, let's do this. Nice, we got the map right here for us. So it looks like it's almost the opposite of our last route, so we wanna go south. Oh yes, and stop. 
And then up to south, we want to go west. Woohoo! After west, we want to go southeast. Yeah. Stop! And then we want to go northeast. So keep it spinning. Stop! Uh, and then just regular east. And then we want to go north. Stop! And then east again. Hey, we got it! Awesome! Yay, you did it, Junpei! Good boy, who's a good boy? Oh, knock it off! Hey, we don't got time for screwing around right now. Check out the right side of the monitor. Kind of slid open like something came out. Oh, yeah. I heard a noise, too. You know that big box in the hall by the exit? I think it made a noise. Like something unlocked, you know? A noise, huh? I might as well check out that big box, then. Hey, we got a helm emblem. Nice. All right. Oh, is that that big box? Nope. This big box. A metal shutter looks pretty sturdy. It's framed with black and yellow warning stripes. All right, let's open it. Oh, holy shit. That's pretty damn creepy. There's a coffin in there. Coffin. Coffin. Oh man, does Seven think? Oh, he's gone all pale. Oh, he's thinking the same thing I am. No, no way. Could this be? Oh, I'm sorry, but what's going on? It's a coffin. I wonder if there's a vampire in it. Oh, right, I guess Clover and Snake don't know the story. Man, I can't bring myself to tell them. Well, at any rate, we'll have to take a look around. Let's try to open it, I guess. There's a metal plaque on the coffin. Snake's touching it. All ice. Oh, the two machines. Mm. Holy shit. Man, this is serious. Oh, well, let's open it, shall we? Clover, if you can give me a hand. Okay, I got it. Ready? Three, two, one. Haha. Uh hmm. -huh. No luck. It doesn't seem to be ready to open. Yeah, it's not like it's screwed shut or something. Yes, I believe it's locked in some other way. Hey, Seven, do you think you could open up with your superhuman strength? Uh, no, 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 I... What's wrong? I think I'll just pass on this one, okay? What the heck? Very well, we'll just have to give up on the coffin for now. Let's look around the room a little more, shall we? Alice sleeps in a small chamber past the forest of knowledge, beneath the navel of the gigantic. Is that actually true? Oh, buddy. Well, we'll leave that be for now. Oh, hey, there's uh, anything in here? Oh, there's something written on this piece of paper. Looks like I got three sheets of stuff. New materials been added to the file screen. Like what? Nothing left in the cabin. Hmm. No, oh, Morse code charts. That's neat. Cool. All right, well, we'll back it up then. We'll probably need that for a puzzle in a second. Do, do, do. And we didn't check this screen yet. What do we got here? Let's see what happens when I... Whoa! Well, now we've got something on the screen at least. Huh? What's this? Oh, wait a minute. I saw something like this when I figured out the Morse code puzzle back in the communications office. Morse code? Uh, yeah. Uh, the dots on here look like dits for that Morse code. There's two dots on the first line, four on the second, and one on the last. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, perhaps you should give it a shot anyway. All right, I'll try. Before I do that, though, maybe I ought to run through the instructions. If I just tap the button, I'll enter a dit. If I hold the button down, I'll enter a da. Once we enter our answer, it'll automatically determine if it was the correct answer or not. I can switch through the sheets by touching the three icons over on the right. All right, let's do this. All right, so it's two lines, four lines, and one line, and we need some kind of three-letter password. Uh, so in this case, all would not do it, because A is two, but then L is four. Okay. Do we check if ice would be the one to do it? That sounds horrifying. I is two, C is four, and... All right, so it's probably ice. Let's give it a go. Oh, no. Okay, so it was. Hmm, I see. Seems like you solved the puzzle, Junpei. Excellent work. The answer was ice. How do you know? 
All I had to do was listen to the sound the machine made. After all, it was a trivial matter to decode them. Ah, yes. I believe I've heard a noise from somewhere on the right of the device you just solved. It sounded rather like a sliding open. Do you see anything that could have made that noise? Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. Ah, yes, one more thing. I heard the sound from behind the shutter. Perhaps the coffin is unlocked now. Wh what? Well, I don't like that. I guess we should check it, though. Ooh, boy! Okay, no one's opened it yet. Let's hit it. All right, fine, I'll open it. Okay, Junpei, you can do this. It's just a box. It's just a box. Oh, holy shit, this is a coffin. There's gonna be something horrible in there. Oh, I just know it. Okay, okay, deep breaths. Here we go. Huh? Hmm? <laughs> oh, man, there's nobody in there. Oh, shit. Can't believe I was scared of something like that. What do you mean, nobody? Were you expecting someone to be in there? It's, it's a long story. Just ask Junpei about it sometime. Hmm? Well, just like Seven said, there's nobody in there. There is something in there, though. Well, two somethings, actually. What is that? Let's click it again. Hey! Two things in the bottom of the coffin. Looks like we got a plate with an emblem on it and... The Neptune Key! Yes, we finally found it. Now we can get through the hallway. Mmm, that's correct, Clover. We do need to get out of this room first, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, let's get the hell out of here as quickly as possible. I don't have any objections to that. I don't think we use the Neptune key in this room. It's really important though, so I'll keep it in my pocket for now. As far as the other thing goes... Sweet. The coffin emblem, excellent. All right, I think with that, we are going to take a pause. I don't know, after all the excitement of the coffin, I don't know if I can do too much more right now. So we'll take a pause and we'll pick this up tomorrow. That's right special Thursday edition for ya. So we will finish it. We'll finish it this week. Well, alright, anyway guys. Thanks for hanging out today. This is Scotty J, signing off, and I'll see you later. Bye bye